It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools where we test students' IQs and hopefully yours as well. So play along with us today. Let's meet today's teams. First from G. James Golson Middle School, would you say hello please to Emmanuel Affalion, Jeffrey Torres, and Dejanae Daly. And from Thomas Johnson Middle School, we have a brother and sister, Grace Nuha, Louis Nuha, and Yuling Lu. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with the easier questions on the left worth 5 and 10, the tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds today, one of these talented, good-looking teams will come back to play Greenbelt for the chance to become the fourth and final contestant in our middle school competition. A lot at stake today. Let's go over and make sure everything's working properly. Jeffrey, would you try your team's buzzer? <coughs> Looks and sounds good. Good luck to you, to Dejeuner and to Emmanuel. Lewis, would you try the green teams? <coughs> Looks and sounds good to me. Good luck to you, to Grace and to you, Ling. Are you ready to play this game? Yeah. Are you going to give it your all? Yeah. I know you are. All right. You've already won by being here, by being ambassadors for your school. Let's have a good game. Alphabetically, G before T, so Jeffrey, let's play this bowl. Go. Zoo Parade. Zoo Parade for 10. Zoo Parade for 10 points. Teams, if you watch the movie Jurassic World, when the aviary was breached, what escaped? Someone has to ring in. When the aviary was breached, what escaped? Thomas Johnson. T-Rex. No, not the T-Rex. Aviary is your clue. You've got to focus in on the word aviary. When the aviary was breached, what escaped? Golson. Pterodactyl. Pterodactyl, absolutely right. Yes, the winged dinosaurs. That's what you want to do. Go red. Green things for 10? Green things for 10 points. Teams, I guess because they help to spread the seeds, birds do not burn their mouth as we humans do when we eat these vegetables that contain capsaicin. Burning mouth, vegetables, put them together. Golson. Peppers. Peppers, all right, now you're clicking. Go red. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, even though this, look at me, even though this candy can't shatter your mandibles, it is still called this kind of breaker. Jawbreaker. Jawbreaker. Jaw is the same as mandible. Good. You're making the connections. Red. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, recently an arborist, you have to know what arborist is now, recently an arborist wrote a book called The Hidden Life of These Green Things. Thomas Johnson. What you got? Plants. What's that? Plants. Mm, not specific enough. G. James Golson, an arborist, recently wrote a best-selling science book called The Hidden Life of These. Trees. 
Arbor Day is a tree day. An arbor is where you find trees. An arboretum, the National Arboretum, just down the street, that's where you find trees. Go red. Zoo Parade for 15? Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams in the ocean, at the bottom of all the food chains, the thing that everybody eats is called krill, K-R-I-L-L. -L. Krill, like lobsters and shrimp and crabs, belong to this C initial group of creatures. Golson? Crustaceans? Yes, indeed. They are all crustaceans. Nicely done. All right, you guys, guys are on a roll here. Just shy of 100 points. Jeffrey, where do we go next? Science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, one of the hottest gifts this Christmas is called the Velrum Arctic Grip Sold Shoes. They'll let you run on ice. Run on ice. Just like these top Arctic predators do. Thomas Johnson. What you got? G. James Golson. No, not penguins. These top Arctic predators can run on ice, just like you can if you buy these Vibram Arctic soled shoes. Okay, what's a predator? A predator is something that eats something. You're at the North Pole. What's going to be eating everything else? What's going to be eating the penguins? The polar bears would have been the right answer. Try again, red. Science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, this word in Spanish means tortoise, which is why it is a good name for these islands off the coast of Ecuador, where Charles Darwin learned a lot about evolution. Oh boy, okay, you've never heard of the Galapagos Islands? The Galapagos Islands, that's where, you know, he studied all of the finches with the different sized beaks and came up with how things evolved over the years. Come on, guys, you're going to have to try a little harder here and listen more to these questions, these clues I'm giving you. Go, Red. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, a diamond is a girl's best friend. Guys don't mind them either. A perfect diamond is sometimes ruined if in the center a few nitrogen atoms sneak in among all these other atoms that make up the diamond. Carbon. Carbon, that's it, Jeff, indeed. All right, so uh, even an imperfect diamond is a nice diamond. All right, it's all carbons. All right, the buzzer has rung. That means we've come to the end of this first half, and it's been a learning half here as the contestants figure out how we're working our game here today. Our score right now is Thomas Johnson 50 and G. James Golson 105, and we'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Uh, we've got six players here today from two middle schools. Let's meet them right now. Let's go to G. James Golson, not far from our studio here in Landover. In fact, we could almost walk up there. Jeff, tell us about your school. Who's your principal? Um, my principal is Jacqueline Marshall Hall. Wonderful. And I know she's out there and supporting this team. And the sponsor of your team? Miss Henry. Wonderful. And uh, Stacy, thank you for all you do for us and what you've done for environmental education over the years because uh, we know Stacy when she used to be at the Patuxent Research Center out there in Laurel. So a uh, uh, wonderful teacher. Any alternates on your team, Jeff? Um, and just give me your, their first names and help Alyssa. him out, Emmanuel and Dejanay, if he forgets some. Uh, Alyssa. Uh-huh. Jakari. Uh-huh. Trayvon, Trayvon and Prince. Wonderful. We'll bring them all out here with Miss Henry in just a few <laughs> moments. Right, that's teamwork. That's what I like to see. What's the best thing about Golson? What do you like to brag about, Jeff? Um, the best part about Golson is all the different types of programs. My favorite one would have to be robotics, but they also offer soccer, baseball, um, the science bowl, bowl, this, and softball. And softball. And Softball. And softball. Listen, so there are a lot of opportunities to do things outside the classroom. Well, we're really happy you're here with us today. And this is not easy, no, you know. And uh, Jeff, uh, they just said, you're going to be the captain, you know, and you didn't seem to have much choice. You're doing a real nice job here. And uh, just hang with me. These questions are tough, but I want you to get them. I'm pulling for you. Tell me what you want to do someday. Uh, what I want to do is um, possibly do something with 
computer engineering and if that backfires then I might do something in animation because I really like to draw. Yeah and animation is is big now you know and it's just going in it's out and now you know you look at something snow. like uh, Frozen and the snow in Frozen looks as good as real snow I mean it's just amazing what they can do. Good job so far. Emmanuel you're a soccer player I know that in your spare time what else do you like to do? Oh I like to watch YouTube and basically sleep yeah, there's nothing wrong with sleep. A good sleep. A lot of people can't sleep well, so if you can, you're lucky. And you spend about a third of your life in that bed, so yeah. Tell me what you want to do when you get older. Probably a soccer player or something that has to do with religion or technology. Wonderful. All right, you've got a plan. I like that. You know, and you're, you have confidence. That makes a big difference. Dejeuner, tell us about yourself. I like what you're wearing over there today. You look like a fashionable young lady. What do you see yourself doing someday? A science teacher or a veterinarian. A science teacher or? A veterinarian. Veterinarian. Do you have any pets at home? Many. What, what you got? A dog, a cat, three turtles, and two lovebirds. Wow, you do have a little zoo there at home, don't you? Yeah. Um, what kind of dog is it? A black lab mixed with a pit. Wonderful. All right. Why'd you want to be on the show? I was here last year and we didn't win. So now you want to come back? Redemption. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I like that word. Redemption or revenge. All right, we're going to get them this time. Good to have you guys here again. All right, Thomas Johnson, nice to have you here, brother and sister, and it's Wuha. I mispronounced your names at the beginning, and my apologies because, you know, it's like having your name appear in the paper and have it misspelled. It's like it wasn't there. So it is Grace and Lewis Wuha, correct? All yes. right. Lewis, tell us about Thomas Johnson. Who's your principal? Uh, currently, we have Mr. Charles Wilson as our principal. Yes, and I remember meeting him because I was at your school recently, and I remember you folks. You were in Miss Rayella's class and uh, doing just fantastic work with STEM. Um, tell me, uh, of course, Miss Rayella is a wonderful teacher and sponsor, an award-winning teacher, and uh, Daisy, thank you for all you've done over the years for Science Bowl here. Any alternates on your team, Lewis? No. No alternates. Okay. Tell me what you see yourself doing someday. Uh, someday, I plan on going to Johns Hopkins University. Wow, right up there in Baltimore. What yeah. would you study? Uh, I don't know yet, but uh, I'm sure it has to do something with getting a career in medical. Medical saying that's the right place to go, yeah. Before I leave you, Lewis, give me uh, something about Thomas Johnson that you like to brag about. Well, we have a lot of programs. Uh -huh. um, we have a robotics club. We have soft softball. Huh? Basketball, guys and girls. Yeah. We have um, baseball, okay, so and we have math clubs. Wonderful. So a lot of options there, just like they have at Golson over there. Thanks, Lewis. Grace, nice to have you here. I know you wanted to be here because you wanted to be on TV. Tell me, uh, uh, tell me about science. What do you like about science? What I like about science is that you know science is the study of the world. Yeah. So it's like it teaches you about everything around the world. Yeah. So it's kind of fun to learn about that. Absolutely. And uh, you're a well-spoken young lady, and I know you like to write, and mm -hmm. you'd like to be an author someday. And what else are you thinking about doing? Being a graphic designer, I use plenty of programs to draw. Yeah. So a very creative young lady. Mm -hmm. It was good to have you here today. And you, Ling, tell us about yourself. You told me earlier that you might want to go to the Air Force Academy someday. Why the Air Force Academy? Because, like, my sister's in the military now, and I don't, like, I don't want to be the same career with her, mm -hmm. so I want to go to the Air Force, but I don't know how to, like, swim, so I don't want to go to Navy. <laughs> <laughs> That's very smart. You know, they probably would teach you to swim, but, you know, you kind of have to get over that fear of the water there. <laughs> but uh, you're, you're a smart young lady and uh, practical as well. What do you want to do eventually? Eventually? Yeah. Engineering. Um, Didn't you say you were interested yeah, in engineering? Computer engineering. Computer engineering, yeah. Why'd you want to be on the show? This one. Because I like science and math. Wonderful. You're in the right place. All right, let's go to the second half here. Golson has a lead here. Come on, Thomas Johnson, don't you give up on me. You stick with me, all right? I want to see those scores go up, even though they're looking for redemption. You know, you, you're in this too. All right, red team, Jeffrey, let's go. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, you might say that the letters PSI are inflation letters because PSI stands for this. Oftentimes you see it on the side of a bicycle tire. PSI. <laughs> Jeffrey. Dejeuner, what do you want to say? Can I pass it to Dejeuner? You sure can. I don't know if it's right, but I'm thinking piss. Say it again. I'm thinking piss. No, these letters, PSI, oh, they PSI. stand. PSI. PSI. 
Thomas Johnson, what does PSI stand for? You might call them inflation letters. If you ever pumped up a bicycle tire, it says you can maybe put 23 or 30 pounds per square inch. PSI, pounds per square inch. Try again, Red. Let's turn that red light out over here and let Jeffrey pick. Go ahead. Dayline signs for 15. Dayline signs for 15 points. Teams is a multiple choice question. Teams, there is a school, a middle school in this county that is named for a preeminent African-American cell biologist. Is it Isaac Gordine, Thurgood Marshall, or Ernest Just? Thomas Johnson. Ernest Just. Ernest Just, indeed, yes. Right up the road here and uh, um, learned a lot about parthenogenesis, how creatures can reproduce without having uh, any kind of sexual component. Uh, he had a lot, of, uh, a lot of cellular achievements. Go again. Green. You're on the board. Let's go. Um, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor here. And this is going to test whether or not you prepared by studying prefixes and suffixes in Greek and Latin. This weed, you've probably seen it in your backyard or close by, is called equacetum. It's called equacetum because, yeah, it does look like the tail of what animal? Equacetum. G. James Golson. What animal, Jeffrey? Thomas Johnson, what you think? Uh, a snake. No, Equus is the name for a horse. They're called horse tails. Try again, Green. Go to Lewis. Um, Dateline, signs for 15. I think that one was the Ernest Just one, was it not? So that one is not available. Thank you for the reminder. But uh, let's get physical for five is still available, even though that light is out. Um, let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. All right, teams, if you went to the tip of South America and looked up in the sky at night, you could see the southern lights, something called the Aurora Australis. Went to the other side of the globe, the North Pole, and saw the northern lights, you'd be looking at these. What is the northern version of the Aurora Australis? What's the northern version, Thomas Johnson? Pass to Grace. Grace? Aurora Borealis. That's it. That's what I want to hear. Good. See, don't be shy. You know your stuff. Go green. Um, body system for 15. For 15 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, something called thermo is a new thermometer, but the doctor doesn't put it in your mouth. He just waves it across your forehead. What the doctor is doing is he's picking up the heat in your temp. It's a multiple choice. Wait for the oh. choices. G. James Golson, here are your choices. The thermo that you wave across your forehead is taking your temperature by measuring the temperature in which of the following blood vessels? The temporal artery, the occipital artery, or the jugular vein? Talk among yourselves. Come up with an answer. Temporal, occipital, or jugular? Jugular. Jugular is the vein. That's on the side here. This is the temporal part of your your forehead. That's the artery I was looking for. Go again, Lewis. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? No, no we're done with that one. You go again. Oh. Um, body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Your body's pancreas has a split personality. Part of it is an exocrine gland because it produces enzymes. The other part is this kind of gland because it produces a hormone called insulin. It's also part of a, a body system. Do you know what that is? It's called the endocrine system. The endocrine system. Try again, Green. Um, zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade for 20 points. All right. On bats, there's something called an interfemoral membrane. I'll give you 20 points if you can tell me where on the bat's body you find an interfemoral membrane. Hey, right, Lewis. Um, on the back? Not on the back. Now, think about the word. Inter, you have to know what inter means. Femoral, what does that sound like? Maybe that'll give me a hint as to where on the bat's body this thing might be. Golson, where would you find it? What you got? Inter means between 
You know where your femur is? Your femur is a bone in your leg. It's between their two legs. Okay, try again, Lewis. Uh, Dateline science for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, if you have a hookworm, a parasite, that's not a good thing. But there's a silver lining because somehow it protects you from autoimmune diseases like celiac disease and this A initial disease that makes it hard to breathe. Thomas Johnson. Asthma. Asthma, that's right. Okay, go green. Thanks, Grace. Um. Pick one, Lewis. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. All right, teams. Eating bugs, ugh. but if you have to, you got to. They're full of protein, but they don't have much iron in them. That means if you just eat too many bugs and nothing else, you're going to develop this A-initialed disease of which there are sickle cell and pernicious varieties. Thomas Johnson. What you got? Don't ring in unless you have an idea. G. James Golson, what A initial autoimmune disease? Jeffrey? Anemia. Have you ever heard of sickle cell anemia? Okay, try again, Green. Uh, green things for five. Green things for five points. On peanuts, Linus believed, but Charlie Brown never thought that on Halloween this giant orange gourd would appear. Thomas Johnson? A pumpkin? Yeah, great pumpkin, that's it. Go again. Tie score, 105 all. Kind of a low scoring uh, game here, let's go. Datelines, dateline science for 10. Dateline science for 10 points. Paleontologists recently find a fos found a fossilized dinosaur brain in a dinosaur that is named for one of these I-initialed lizards that are still alive today that look like dinosaurs. Golson. Igu iguanas. That's right, and it's an iguanodon. Red, go. Oh. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, if that Lady Gaga song, ra ra, ooh ra ra, roma roma ma, keeps going through your head, you got one of these. Lewis? An earworm? You got an earworm, yeah. Go, green. Uh, green things for 25. Green things for 25 points, teams. THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, is the psychoactive drug found in this plant that is now legal in five states. Weed? Weed, yes, or marijuana. Go, red. Zuparade for five? Zuparade for five points. Teams? Even though these shaggy bovines don't fly, people go to restaurants to eat their wild wings. Buffalo wings. That's it, buffalo wings. Named because of Buffalo, New York, not because buffaloes fly. Okay, go red. Dayline signs for five. Dayline signs for five points. Teams, this, is, this year is the 75th anniversary of the publication of the book about this inquisitive simian who was taken out of Africa by the man in the yellow hat. Who was it? Curious George. Um, Dejeuner George. who? Curious George. Curious George, that's right, go red. Science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, if you have pneumonia, and it is pneumococcal pneumonia, it's not caused by a virus, it's caused by one of these. A bacterium. Try again, red. Um, super 8 for 25. Super 8 for 25. Super 8 for 25 points. Teams, whether it's a jaguar, a lion, a tiger, an ocelot, or your house cat, it belongs to this five-lettered genus. Five-lettered genus. Um. What you got, Lewis? It belongs to uh, five letters. <laughs> okay. What do I have? Golson, what do you think? Feline. Feline or felis, we will take. Good deal. All right. The buzzer says that's it for this game, and it was tied, but it looks like Golson has 
surged into the lead, redemption time. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Some tough questions today, and for a lot of these students, this was their first time ever doing this. They acquitted themselves very well. We're proud of all of our players. Our final tally today is Thomas Johnson, 110. G. James Golson, 175. So Dejeuner and Emmanuel, I know you're happy about this especially. Jeffrey, congratulations. And look at the shadow team plus one back there. Trayvon and Prince and Jakari and Alyssa and the very proud Stacey Henry. Congratulations. And Grace, let me see a nice smile for, for you over there. Lewis as well, our brother and sister team. And you, Ling, thanks for being here. And Ms. Rayla, always great to have you with us. Thank you for your support. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on another edition of the Science Bowl. Bye-bye now.